In 1350, what we know as the idyllic French countryside was a living hell. For more than 15 years, the people had suffered at the hands of English invaders. Little did they know that this war would last for another 100 years. But through this crucible of fighting, famine and plague, there would emerge the modern nation of France. England's king, Edward III, looked jealously across the English Channel. Wanting France for his own, he had added the fleur de lis, the symbol of France, to his own royal standard. This was an all-out declaration of war. And in 1337, he invaded. But France already had a king, Philippe VI. As the English burned their way across the land, Philippe's army and his legendary knights marched to meet them and came face to face with the English longbow. A simple weapon, but the most devastating the knights had ever faced. The heroes of France fell to storms of English arrows. The war engulfed the French countryside. By 1351, the conflict was focused on Brittany. One fight stands out as a spectacular display of chivalry and a symbol of the wider conflict between the two enemy nations. The combat of the Thirty is still commemorated here in Brittany. It was a dispute between two local families. Supported by the opposing sides in the war, the French and English commanders decided to settle it through a trial of knightly combat. Each side would choose 30 champions to fight on neutral ground. France prepared to defend itself against England's finest. After victory at the combat of the Thirty, the French faced devastating raids from England's Black Prince. But France's King Jean II was closing in. Jean finally caught the English near the city of Poitiers in September 1356. The French army outnumbered the English by thousands. King Jean himself joined the fight, but what seemed a certain victory for France soon turned into a nightmare. The English longbow devastated the mighty French army. An endless hail of arrows gutted the main French force. Then the English captured King Jean. The fight was over. The Battle of Poitiers was another catastrophic defeat for the French. The English had destroyed most of France's nobility in a single day. Now they turned their attention towards taking the French capital, Paris. The invaders marched unopposed towards Paris. The remains of some of the medieval walls of Paris still stand today. As the English army approached, the terrified locals sought shelter behind these defences. Could France's capital withstand the full might of the Black Prince's army? The walls of Paris 
held out against the English onslaught. England's King Edward and the Black Prince abandoned the siege. They marched towards Chartres to try their luck at conquering a less formidable target. But before they could attack, a violent storm hit the army. Killing a thousand English soldiers in a tempest of hail and freezing winds. To Edward, this Black Monday disaster seemed like divine retribution. A sign that it was time to stop waging war and make peace with France's King Jean. But even as peace between kings was reached, the people of France were still living in bloodshed and turmoil. Between 1358 and 1370, France was in chaos. Peasant uprisings, rampaging bands of mercenaries, and civil war ravaged the country. Peasants rose in rebellion, killing their lords and wreaking havoc. Mercenary bands also roamed the land. Known as Routier, they had once been hired by the English to fight against the French, but were cut loose when peace was reached. They systematically ravaged and pillaged towns across France. And with King Jean prisoner in England, his son Charles the Dauphin faced homegrown attacks on his rule by powerful French lords, beset from all sides. The Dauphin's forces had to regain control over their own country. With rebels and raiders eliminated at Cocherelle, King Charles V faced one last threat to France, the relentless English invaders. Word arrived that the English army was weak and scattered, divided by infighting. The king quickly directed his army to chase down the old enemy of France at Pont Valin. The French won an overwhelming victory at the Battle of Pont Valin. It was the first time the English had been utterly defeated during the war. But the triumph was short-lived. As England spent the next 60 years amassing French territory through alliances and victories at great battles such as Agincourt. It seemed that nothing could stop England. Who then? could have foreseen that a teenaged girl was about to change the course of history. In 1429, France was in dire straits. Nowhere was it more evident than the besieged city of Orléans. The city was completely surrounded by English-held forts. But just a few days' ride away, here in Chinon, there was potential help. The French royal prince, the Dauphin Charles, was holed up in his fortress and under pressure to ride out to save Orléans. As Charles hesitated, a young peasant girl arrived at his court. Her name was Jeanne d'Arc. She claimed to have received saintly visions, giving her a divine task to help Charles become king 
and drive the English out of France forever. Charles was skeptical, but was soon convinced of her divinity. And he charged the 17-year-old with the near impossible mission to liberate Orléans. To Jeanne, this was the first step in realizing her God-given destiny. In April 1429, she rode out from Chinon at the head of her army to confront the hated enemy of France. Jeanne d'Arc had liberated Orléans and put the English army to flight. However, as the English retreated, they became an obstacle for Charles the Dauphin. He needed a clear path from Chinon to Reims, where he would be crowned king. Nearing the town of Pate, the English sought to regroup. But Jeanne d'Arc and her French army were closing in. The Battle of Pate was a disaster for the English. The French wiped out their bowmen and drove their forces from the Loire Valley. Now for Jeanne d'Arc and the Dauphin, the way to Reims was clear. The Maid of Orléans rode with the Dauphin through the streets and was at his side when he was finally crowned King Charles VII of France. But less than two years later, Jeanne was captured in battle, sold to the English, and put on trial for heresy. She spent six months locked in a dungeon awaiting her fate. King Charles, who owed his crown to Jeanne, did nothing to help win her freedom. She was found guilty. On May 30th, 1431, Jeanne d'Arc was brought here, to the old market square in Rouen, where she was burned at the stake. She was 19 years old. But what the Maid of Orléans started could not be denied. Her victories were the first in a chain of successes for France's military. Liberty was within reach. Thanks to the leadership of two brothers, Jean and Gaspard Bureau, the French army became experts in the use of artillery, transforming it into a disciplined, modern fighting force. In 1448, King Charles was ready to make a major move against the English. He vowed to retake Normandy. Thanks to the explosive force of cannon fire, the French were close to victory in this century-long war. But in a final grasp at power, the English dispatched a fresh army, equipped with their tried and tested longbows. Formigny would be a trial of old versus new, to determine the fate of France. Formigny, the roar of cannon fire sounded the death knell for England's ambitions in France. King Charles and the Bureau brothers did not let up on the offensive, and in 1453, the English retreated across the Channel. France was finally at peace. More than 100 years had passed since the first English chevauchets had scorched the land.
The iconic French knights who fought in those early days would not have recognized their own military a century later. The English longbow, once the scourge of France, was no match for French artillery in the last years of the war. And by 1453, France's border looked very different, growing to encompass territories once claimed by England and their allies. After enduring a century of conflict, France emerged as a transformed nation. The country and its people had persevered and unified into a kingdom that could defend itself. Against all odds, France had won the Hundred Years' War.